My name is Christian Puckett. This is Peacekeeper. All right, we're on. Hi, Richie. Hey, Chris. How are you doing? I'm good. Doing good. How are you? <laughs> I think I'm all right. I think yeah. I'm all right. Um, hello, everybody listening and, and watching. This is my good friend, Richie Giacoletti. Yeah. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah, that yeah, sounds pretty good. <laughs> I know I pronounced it right. I just <laughs> wanted to make sure. Um, okay, let me see here. We started, or like we became friends probably when I was like 19 or 20. How old were we? How long ago was that? Uh, yeah. I mean, how old are you now? I'm 27. <laughs> so for sure, at least seven years ago, because I remember going to uh, bars and stuff and you had your right. fake ID. My fake ID. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I remember when you turned twenty one, you were afraid to go to the same bars because like, <laughs> I used my same name. Yeah, <laughs> same name and everything. And they're gonna be like, "What the heck?" But I remember the first time I used that was with David Lacumbre, David. Oh yeah, um, Lacumbre, and I had a Connecticut ID, so it was a fake ID. Or I ordered it from China, and <laughs> it arrived in this like random headphone case, like a month later. It's like seventy bucks or whatever. And then I used it at La Cumbre with this guy that I'm like pretty close with now. Uh, but at the time, that was the first time I met him. And he's like, oh, you're from uh, Connecticut. Cool. Like what part? And I was just like, the, I don't know. <laughs> the, the north. <laughs> the, yeah, I think. But he's, he, I guess he was kind of familiar with Connecticut. But anyway. Um, it's so weird in New Mexico. You just didn't assume anyone would. Yeah. Be familiar with Connecticut. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was just like. I think that was the only state that the fake ID people produce because I don't know. But looking at it now, I still have it. It looks bad. Like the lamination (laughs) is terrible. It's way stiffer. Like it feels like so thick. I'm like, I don't know. I use it a lot too. Does it have like the back stuff on it? It it has that high or what's the word? High holographic holographic stuff. It so I mean, and it scans too because I had people scan it and it worked. And I guess it it pulled up. I don't, I couldn't tell you, but yeah. never got in trouble. Uh, the closest I ever did get to somebody being suspicious was in Denver. We went to Denver. Where were we? With you? I don't remember. We went to this like arcade bar thing. Okay. And this guy was so sus. Like yeah. he was like, dude, take your glasses off. Like I needed to like, and then he like asked me a couple questions and I started to sweat. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you think that's like an Albuquerque, like didn't give a crap <laughs> as much or maybe i feel like people are weird with alcohol laws here yeah specifically because nobody wants to get in trouble alcoholism oh, totally. i don't know um but that's when we became friends is yeah, <laughs> around we'll, we'll, that age around that age and we have so much shared history yeah that's kind of a long time like we're not i mean i'm turning 30 this year which is whoa wild, i know yeah I'm old but um, in the span of 30 years, like eight years of your life, that's like, that's a ton. That's almost a third. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Especially like the older years, like your twenties, uh, when you're turning 30 your twenties are like, that's what you mostly remember. That's like where oh, you're yeah. becoming who you are. So like, yeah, we've spent those years together, living together a few of those years. Yeah. So we lived together at the Shirley house. Shove five guys in there <laughs> without telling our landlord. Yeah, I wasn't even technically on the lease. I think no, you were. Yeah, and then James wasn't even didn't even have a room. He was in like right. our second living room. Yeah, and then yeah, you weren't on the lease. Didn't screw us over, which is nice. You could have. <laughs> Dude, that was a really nice house. Yeah, I liked. I really liked living there. That was like a really fun time. It was. Oh yeah, definitely like unhealthy. But for sure in like the best way <laughs> like in the way we needed it to be like yeah. i think we were all like sad and like trying to figure our crap out so we were like yeah let's drink and smoke a lot of pot and oh yeah that's all we did though like we didn't i don't know we didn't go hard we didn't like start doing coke or anything no we nice. didn't go too hard <laughs> but we were 
I mean, just so many good, we had good traditions. Like we would do oh, Sunday yeah. dinners, dinners where like Sunday. all of our friends, we were called the low gears. Yeah. Um, that was our friend group. And I mean, there was probably a core team of 10 people or so, yeah. maybe somewhere around there. And every Sunday we would all pitch five, 10 bucks, whatever yeah. it is. And then we would all go, Sometimes. go hit up Smith's. <laughs> right. Yeah. And we yeah. wouldn't always pitch, but. <laughs> and then you and I, and like Kenton and Emily would hit up. <laughs> no one ever helped us. Right. But either. that was so much fun. Oh yeah. That like, was a blast. And like going and picking up all these, uh, groceries and yeah. making this really good intentional meal and yeah. then sharing it with all of our friends that was a oh yeah we'd sit around the beer pong table <laughs> that had a table. star of david on it that we don't even know where it came from and yeah that was great it made sundays like yeah especially for like we were all like transitioning out of the church we were all like had grown up in the yeah. church so it was like it was kind of nice because it was like something we were familiar with, like this communal thing on a Sunday. Yeah. Um, but it was also a lot more, it was a relaxed communal thing where we didn't feel, I don't know. Sometimes you would leave church feel like not inspired, <laughs> maybe yeah. guilty or something. So it was nice. It was like, we were just like with these people who for that time, I feel like were like our chosen families. Right. Cause like yeah. I wasn't even spending time with my family back then that much. And, Possibly by choice, I guess, but also yeah. like, also not like some of them not living there. And so, yeah, it was like a really beautiful thing, I think. Yeah. And at that season in my life, I legitimately didn't have any family in town. Like yeah, my yeah. family had moved on to Portland, yeah. um, Nashville. And so it was just me. And so, yeah, again, like chosen true, family. Yeah. And it was just sort of like this unconditional or like no no judgments like yeah. just like accept it as you are <laughs> like we were yeah. all pretty fucked up and like oh, totally um but we were all like there for each other yeah um and yeah just kind of this like pivotal point in life where yeah you're figuring out who you are and then those bonds i'm realizing as i get older that those bonds are pretty significant because they're oh, yeah. continuing to last yeah um whereas i'm finding that i'm not really making as many of those relationships as time goes on oh, like totally. maybe like one or two here or there but as far as like this network of yeah homies of close oh, homies for sure. and it's hard like we're we're in a phase of our lives now we're all like getting married, having kids, like you and I both have kids and it's like, ugh, it's so hard to find time to do anything else. Um, yeah. Let alone like hang out with a person or a group of people every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We would hang out every, every day. day. And it it's was, just like, where are we hanging out? Like what time are we hanging out? Yeah. Like there was no ifs or whys. Yeah. It was just like, we're hanging out every oh, day. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> like or, what are you doing when you get off work? Like, We'll yeah. just text us and you'll find us. Oh, yeah, we just know Justin was going to just walk in our door. <laughs> we never locked it for some reason. He just walked on in. And, like, sometimes, like, we wouldn't even be in the living room. We'd just sit on the living, on the couch <laughs> and, like, turn on the Xbox and start playing, like, Grand Theft Auto. Oh, my goodness. Smoke a bowl and we're, like, we're still in bed or something. <laughs> but looking back, I'm like, oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. Oh, it's, <laughs> like, it's like endearing. He was, like, our Kramer or something. Like, <laughs> yeah, totally. Bust in and. But yeah, it was, yeah, I wouldn't trade it that time for anything, honestly. Yeah. Uh, it was great. And yeah, it's, uh, the like most of those relationships I feel like have like stood the test of time, yeah. I guess, even though it hasn't been that long, but, or even just like the changing of our lives. Like, mm -hmm. I think it was tough for a few people when people's lives started changing in the group. Uh, but it's like, you know, how, it's how it goes. <laughs> yeah. So we also um, have like done some work together too, as far as like yeah. uh, we've, we've shot a couple weddings. Um, yeah. I remember shooting a wedding at that one church with you oh, and yeah. maybe it was like a re relative of yours. Yeah. Um, it was like, yeah. So, just, yeah. <laughs> someone's brother. Like, uh, uncle maybe. I don't know. And then you helped me shoot a wedding up uh, in Northern New Mexico yeah. Let's see here. We went to Durango a handful of times. 
Did you go? Did you go with us on that big road trip in the minivan? No, no. Okay, I think that was like right before we started hanging out a lot. Okay, because uh, I remember hearing about that. Okay, but that was with. Yeah, I think that was like when I was still like, I think Kent and I were like more hanging out with like Levi, and then like Levi kind of. Honestly, he was like the conduit for like yeah. meeting you and Ben and Kaylin and Emmy and everyone. And I remember the first time I actually met you was at that Wellesley house. Oh, and we weren't even like hanging out. You just kind of showed up with uh, Jacob um, seems like Sinclair, that. yeah. And like I was there with Kenton and Levi, and we were hanging out with Colton. And like you, you and Emmy were just kind of like we were like I don't know, like Levi's friends. So you guys yeah. were like kind of weird towards <laughs> us at first. <laughs> And then somehow Man. we just started hanging out. I don't even know how, honestly. I can't remember. We just kind of did. Yeah, we just kind of clicked. I don't know why, yeah. but I still don't know why. No. Why are we friends? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, that big road trip, I remember hearing, but I think I was like right before. Cause were you living at the, the Clancy house? I was living at Clancy with Jesse Littlebird and James. Yeah. yeah. Another uh, raunchy house. Yeah. With some rough but also fun times. Yeah, I think that one was raunchier than the Shirley house. Yeah, personally. yeah, that was when I remember a one specific season in that Clancy house where Emily was on tour with. Yeah, I remember. Or she was like babysitting the Isley girls on that one tour, and it was a long tour, almost two months. Yeah, and that was one season where I was like, okay, I. Definitely smoked weed every single day for two months straight yeah. and just played GTA. Yeah. And there was a piano in that house. I would also yeah. play a lot of piano. That was a good time. Um, but then, yeah, James was a sad boy and Jesse Littlebird was also a sad voice. We were all yeah. just sad boys <laughs> together. And man, those times. Um, I think it's weird. I was like yeah i was like 20 during that season um yeah. there's certain aspects that i look back with rose colored glasses but there's other aspects where i'm like yeah that was like compl- that was not a <laughs> so many unhealthy behaviors and i'm kind of oh, glad sure. to have moved on from yeah. that um but we were all doing them together which yeah i think made it acceptable at the time and also like it was like fun like like we were just all we were smoking cigarettes like crazy. Which, oh yeah, um, yeah, just so much alcohol, so much. It was we like would a do the pack a day. <laughs> is what we would. Buy. Oh, we would also do those. It's always sunny challenges. Oh, what were those called again? The, the Wade Boggs. Yeah, <laughs> where for birthdays we all got white T-shirts, and then every beer we would drink, we would get a sharpie and do yeah. a tally mark <laughs> for how many beers we would drink. I think I made it to i didn't make it very far yeah. maybe <laughs> maybe seven or eight yeah. but what was like your high count what was Mine your high score it was like ben's birthday when we did it at the clancy house and i made it to 12 ben and i both made it to 12 beers and then we ran out of beer so we just stopped otherwise we probably would have kept going which i'm glad we ran out of beer because i also <laughs> like i woke up at like 8 a.m to go to class the next day I just oh. like wearing that Freaking shirt. <laughs> you wore it to school. I wore it because I didn't have any clothes. I was at your house. And like I just reeked of beer. Oh, man. And I'm, I know everyone was just like looking at me. <laughs> um, like I was a mess. Because I was. I like, I smelled awful. I was wearing a shirt. And Kaylin had like, she was in charge of the marking. So she had turned some of the marks into like, I had like a penis. And, oh, like, no. Different things. So it wasn't <laughs> just lines. She was like got all creative with the markings. So, Yeah. Good yeah, times. that was <laughs> well. Look at us now. Yeah, we, we've we've matured, we've grown, we have those as memories, and now we're both full time dads. You know, we've got responsibilities. <laughs> Go to bed at like eight o'clock, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I've been going to bed at seven thirty. Really, dang. Yeah, I haven't been able to do that yet. But <laughs> well, because I put Aesop down at seven. Yeah. Well, actually, he's been well. It doesn't matter, but around <laughs> seven, between seven and eight. Yeah. And then I get up at four. Oh, well, that makes every sense. Every single yeah. morning. So uh, I've got to be in bed by eight in order to get my 
required eight hours. Or, oh my gosh. Yeah. Sounds terrible. It's actually not it's actually not too bad. And I actually kind of I kind of enjoy it. Okay. That's um because on days like today where I'm not at work, you know, my circadian rhythm kind of carries over. And so I'm kind of up at four, four thirty, oh, around okay. five on my days off. And then I get three hours just to yourself. Just to myself. And See, it's so not like it's a nice, <laughs> all right, get make some breakfast, make some coffee, sit on my computer, take a shower, and just like no babies. Yeah. No Emily. Which yeah. is like <laughs> No, no, yeah. That's just not... <laughs> nice. Cause I just back I mean, back in those like hang days. I needed to be alone. Oh yeah. Um, like I needed to reset periodically. Um, and I think I still kind of try to carry that or not even try to, but that's just kind of in my nature of just every once in a while, maybe once a day, even if it's just 30 minutes, I need quality alone time. And that's just impossible these days with kids. And the only alone time I get is, in the car driving to work yeah or like super late at night or super early in the morning yeah. that's about it um maybe oh, yeah. a little bit during nap time but it's great like once you have kids uh even once you get married but then even more so when you have kids you have to like you have to be so intentional about so many things and even just like um i think i don't know if it was my therapist or hannah's told us or told her or me mm-hmm. um you need to like set aside even if it's just an hour a week to have your guys' like alone time no matter what it is and like yeah we've been we've been trying to be like a little more intentional like for me like i i'll go to like the the golf the golf course and just like hit it like a bucket of balls and it takes me like about an hour yeah and like that's like it's been so great and like uh with me right now i'm stay at home dad so like it's even more important for me for with that because like in the past, it was, like, before Han and I, like, kind of switched. Uh, honestly, going to work was kind of, like, I was, like, all right, this is my little bit of a break. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, that's, that. now, now, like, we have to be real intentional. And, like, Hannah, like, needs, like, she's the opposite. She's, like, I want to just be in my bed and, like, read my book or something. And yeah. It's her intentional alone time. But, yeah, it's, like, really important. You don't realize it. Because when you're younger, mm. just go to your room. Like, I remember you would do that all the time. You would oh, just, yeah. you wouldn't even say anything. You would just stand <laughs> up and walk to your room and close the door. And I'm like, all right, we wouldn't see you till the next day. And like, no one was upset. It was just like, all right, Christian nieces. Yeah, that was time. just, that was my quirk, you know? <laughs> yeah. Just sometimes you feel it and you're like, all right, yeah. alone time, let's go. So but now it's just, you can't do that. I can't, can't that. walk away from your kid. <laughs> I can, but <laughs> yeah, because it shouldn't. <laughs> um, dang. So what's it like being the stay at home dad right now? It's pretty cool. Um, it comes in ways. It's like up and down like anything. Like at first, because like I had like, you know, I've worked on top of school since I was in high school. So like it was kind of cool at first. I was like, oh, heck, yeah, this is like a little bit of a break. I'm just kind of chilling at home. Um, but then it, it kind of got a little rough. Like I definitely being that person has always like been working and like always busy Kind of started going a little stir crazy. I was getting like cabin mm. fever, and then like winter hit, Ooh. and we couldn't go. I couldn't even like take Ozzy on like walks or Brutal. go to the park yeah. or like, you know, because we we now like even that it's getting warmer again. Like we go to the park, we go like down to the river, we go do something. Yeah, um, it got a little rough, and like it definitely took a toll on me, and um, kind of brought out, not brought out, but kind of made me realize like. I have some mental issues that, like, I either avoided or just, like, pre- like didn't know was there or, like, mm. pretended wasn't there. So it's kind of interesting, which, again, it's, like, positives and negatives about it. Like, I kind of, like, I'm, like, glad I, like, realized some of these yeah. things. Uh, it got me to start therapy. I don't know if I would have ever if I never had realized that, like, oh, I'm actually, like, this feeling I'm having, is this, like, depression? And then I find out, oh, that is what it is. And, Dang, okay. Um, I, I kind of realized like I felt it my whole life, but didn't really know until like I've been like forced to like be at home and mm. deal with it. Because before, like my my escape instead of like going to be alone, my escape was always like, oh, I need a 
do something. I need to be surround myself with people, surround yeah. myself with noise and things going on. And that's how I like used to like handle my, yeah myself. And like, um, yeah. And then now since I started therapy, started figuring my crap out, it's great. I honestly love it. Like I am so thank honestly, like so thankful and grateful for this time with Ozzy. Like it, mm-hmm. it's definitely like a lot of parents don't get this time yeah. that I'm getting this quality bonding time. Like him and I are so close that it's like, I've never imagined myself being this close to like a child, honestly, which I guess you maybe shouldn't be as close as I am to, <laughs> to like someone else's kid. <laughs> yeah. Sure. But like your own kid. Yeah. Yeah. Your own kid. I'm like, we're like, he's like my little best friend. And like, yeah, I don't know. Like as great as of his dad, my dad was, we never were as close as I think Ozzy and I already are. Hmm. And we've never had this bond that him and I already have. Like, um, yeah, I don't think, I mean, obviously there's other stay at home dads out there. There's plenty stay at home moms and they all experience this. And it's, uh, it's kind of messed up. Like I saw this like one, like stay at home dad, it was like a TikTok or something. Mm -hmm. And he was joking, but he was like, it's kind of like you're in an abusive relationship with this toddler. (laughs) He's like, you're like, it's horrible so much of the time. And like, this kid is just like, he's tired. He's crying. Yeah. You're cleaning his poop. Yeah. Multiple times a day. And then you get this one moment where he comes up and gives you a hug and like gives you a kiss. (laughs) And then you're just like, Oh my God, I need more of that. So you just keep doing all this. Just going back. Yeah. And that's what it's like. I mean, that's a little extreme. It is funny though, but it's fine. Like, ah, just all these moments. I'm like, I wouldn't get to see like watching him just like develop and like, he's slowly like talking and like he's climbing on things. And he's like, I'm like being like, do this and this and this. And he does it. I'm just like, Oh my God. I'm just like, out of Mm -hmm. nowhere, he starts just like doing human things, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. And it's also how it's just so ridiculous. Like, Oh my God. He said banana. And it sounds like, nah, nah, nah. And you're (laughs) like, Oh, he's so, he's a genius. It's so (laughs) satisfying to watch them incrementally develop or you're just watching them kind of come online bit by bit by bit and it's something that only the parent is in tune with and then you try to like express that or explain that to somebody else and they're like cool like that's not like nobody else cares except you or except the parents because you're there putting in the work every single day and then you just get these yeah these little bits of satisfaction that kind of like make it all worth it oh yeah and then saying it out loud you're just like yeah that sounds ridiculous (laughs) But it's still, like, it doesn't take away how much joy it brings you and how, like, awesome yeah. it is. And so, yeah, um, overall, it's it's an amazing experience, like, just being at home with him. And, yeah, you know, it's not, again, it's not, like, would never have been, like, my first choice to do, but I am so happy that I'm doing it. And, like, yeah, I think it's something that's just going to, like, I don't know. I, I could be wrong, but it could be something that's going to, like, make – some sort of difference in my and Ozzy's relationship for the rest of like his life or my yeah. life. I guess my life ideally. Yeah. Um, because like, yeah, it's just like this bond that like, I'm sure like all kids get with their mom because their mom's home all the time. Mm-hmm. If it like, if the thing is switched and like Ozzy and Hannah still obviously have like this crazy bond that like will never change. Cause right. you know, she grew him and birthed yeah. him and <laughs> feeds, him, they feeds yeah. him and everything. But like, we definitely are closer than like I've seen other kids with like dads and um, yeah, you know, I've been, I've been in the shit, you know, I kind of like kind of been down in the trenches with this kid, <laughs> like just like, you know, I'm online like looking up all these like mommy blogs, like what do I do? <laughs> like this kid's starting to throw tantrums. Like what? Yeah. I'm, like it's funny. Cause like part of me gets a little offended for a second. I'm like reading these articles. It's like, all right, stay at home moms. I'm just like, God dang it. <laughs> Come on, let's be more gender yeah. inclusive here. And then I'm like, no, I Yeah, they're, I, they're, like, not, it's a pretty pays. specific demographic that they're for catering sh- to. For sure. So like for a split second, I'm like, ah, but or like my grandma always call me Mr. Mom, that old uh movie. I don't know if you're yeah, I, I don't can't know. remember who it is. It's uh Mr. Mom. Yeah. With uh the guy who played Batman a long time. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't know. 
Um, but yeah, he like becomes a stay at home mom, and it's just like it's like a comedy. It's like, oh, it's so hard. You're the guy is seeing how right. hard it is, and not not to take away from that, it's difficult. And like, I have so much respect for every stay at home mom that's out there. And also, you know, like my mom not being a stay at home, but she couldn't because she was a single mom, mm. three kids at twenty two. Yeah, hell no, dude. It, isn't it just like, <laughs> like it's so hard. It's so yeah. brutal. It's like there's no going back. It's yeah. there's so many ways to describe it, but it's also I like, I feel like it's really kind of rounding me out as a as just a human, oh, totally. and it's teaching me so many things that. I like look back at my life before kids or yeah. look at people around my age that don't have kids. I'm just like, whoa, that's just a completely, yeah. I'm just in this completely different world that's not unique at all because so many, like everybody's, everybody that's had a kid has gone through this before. So it's yeah. not that special. But people that don't experience that, I don't know. Like, do you think people are missing out by that? Or do you think, you know, having kids is like, obviously it's so special and it teaches yeah. you so much, but maybe it's for everybody or maybe it's not for everybody. I feel like it's hard. It's a little both. Like it's definitely, I think, well, no, I, don't know. I was about to say kind of a blanket statement. Where I'm like, it could be for everyone. Like you have the kid and you're like, Oh, like you don't realize it till you actually have the kid and then you settle into it. But then I'm like, no, there's, terrible parents out there yeah there are, and not not to say like everyone who's like given up their kid is a terrible parent but there's also people who've just given up their kids because like this is not for me yeah. and like that doesn't mean you're a bad parent but that maybe it means it just wasn't for you and then there also are just like dads who just like left right and like so obviously having a kid didn't change them like they were like no i gotta stay the same right and i'm so curious as to how that doesn't hit somebody how that doesn't affect yeah. somebody where they're able to do that because yeah i can kind of understand the initial temptation to be like oh, oh totally. shit i'm way over my head yeah. i'm piecing out yeah. like i can understand that but sticking through yeah which is very i mean like yes this is a daily grind and it's very yeah. hard and you have to be very disciplined yeah um but sticking through I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, everybody needs to have kids to experience what yeah. I'm going through. <laughs> but yeah, there's no, some totally. people that I don't think are, maybe they're not cut out for it or maybe they, they're just aware of their own personal uh, like limits and capacities oh, yeah. to where they're like, yeah, I'm not going to have kids. I I can barely handle my dogs or like, oh, for I sure. can, like, you have to have so many things in line in order to do it the right way. Not to say yeah. that there's a, I guess there's wrong ways. I don't know. There's yeah. just so many different like Sorry. aspects. Yeah. It's it's and it's hard. Like some people like they don't want the limitations. Like like yeah. it does. Like it having a kid limits you so much. But like it depends if it's worth it or not for you. And like for me, it's it's been worth it for Hannah. I believe it's been worth it. Um, yeah, I mean you can't you can't just pick up and go. We both can't be working full time right now and just have like all this extra money. Like, Oh yeah. Um, it's not worth it with how much daycare costs, you know, like we want to travel a ton, but it's hard with a kid and it's not impossible. And we're like, we do do some traveling and like, we're learning how to like navigate it with the kid, but also we go travel somewhere. Can't just go out and enjoy like the nightlife. Like we used to, it's mm -hmm. like, well, this kid still has to go to bed by seven or else <laughs> yeah. he's a complete monster the next day. And then you can't just leave him. Yeah. <laughs> once exactly. he goes to sleep, can't afford to like have a nanny who goes with us everywhere, you know? Um, but yeah, then there's people like Seth Rogen. <laughs> I've been saying like all kinds of interviews with him lately. Mm -hmm. People talking to him about having kids cause him and his wife haven't, and they don't want kids. Like they're, mm. they're a hundred percent like, no, we're like, we don't even regret not having kids and like, which is the way to live your life. Like, yeah, d live no regrets. Like I don't regret having a kid. Well, not even a little bit. There's times, like you said, where I'm like, oh, this is, so <laughs> and yeah. it would be so much easier without this dude around. But then he comes up and, you know, gives you the little hug, like I said, and then you're like, all right, whatever. <laughs> also, I've, I've found that it's actually gotten so much easier as time. Like, Oh yeah. The first, like whenever Aesop, got here i just remember that first 
three month period yeah. of being like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah, this is so done. hard. But now with Ira, I, I don't know. You just learn how to live with babies. And then once you kind of understand them a little bit, you're like, oh, this isn't that bad. It's just having another small person around that yeah. you just kind of, you know, make sure that they're cared for and they've got food and they've got water yeah. and they've got a nice place to sleep. And then they'll kind of just do their own thing and they'll bug you for sure. But oh, yeah. <laughs> it's fun and it, and it like pushes me. Yeah. So, okay, you want to go to the park? I should probably go to the park too. Yeah, yeah. let's go to the park. Um, like I'd rather play my video game, but <laughs> we should go to the park. <laughs> but then also I'm thinking now, what's it going to be like whenever they're gone? Oh, shit. I'm like, oh, that's really sad. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I think about like, I'm like, I'm so excited for like, when him and I can start, like, talking. And, like, you see these videos of, like, kids just saying, like, the weirdest shit. There's, like, the most outrageous. I'm like, I'm mm-hmm. so... I love that. Like, that... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to just, like, Ozzy just start saying the most ridiculous stuff to me. Yeah. Um, And then I'm like, ah, oh, then he's getting older, though, so that's a little scary. Then I'm like, I'm excited for us to, like... Hannah and I were talking about the other day. We're like, we're excited for, like, Saturday mornings. Like, oh, we got to go to the soccer game. Like... Yeah. That sounds fun. I don't, like... Even just like going to my niece and nephews when we go to Phoenix, it's a blast. I'm like, I can't wait for us to do this. And then I start thinking, I'm like, what about when he becomes the age where he doesn't want to hang out with me? Anymore? I know. Or I'm not his like best friend. Anymore. <laughs> like that bums me out. Like, and like, I'll, I'll be understanding because I did that. Like, I wanted to hang out with my friends. I didn't want to hang out with my dad or my mom that much. Yeah. And then that just makes you look at your own dynamic and your own relationship with your own parents. <laughs> yeah. And then. You know, I guess that's just something that you're going to have to deal with whenever you get there. And then yeah. you'll have to figure out, okay, like I did this brutal, like I just poured so much of my life into these kids. I spent the last 18 yeah. years providing for them, just giving them everything that yeah. stole, <laughs> literally stole life from me. And then now they're just like their own people doing their own thing. Yeah. And it's more of like this friendship dynamic or not like yeah hopefully um, like, yeah hopefully <laughs> it's this friendship dynamic i know some people are not super tight with their parents yeah and i'm just kind of i guess mentally preparing for that and it yeah. i don't know if it i guess i can't think too much about it or else it's just like okay i just need to be in the be in the moment and experience yeah. this um cuz it's not going to be here for forever and if emily and i are done which we're saying we are at the moment yeah then it's like okay this is the last time i'm gonna be able to experience two kids that are two years old and two months old like yeah this is never i'm never gonna feel this again and then at some point it's just gonna be back to me yeah and it's gonna be back to me and emily and that's i guess there's freedom like yeah you're getting freedom back and you get to do all these things where you don't have to be actively parenting on a moment to moment basis. So that means maybe both of us can be working, which means more income and then yeah, more yeah. time for traveling and doing oh, all these yeah. things that we want to do. Um, but oh, there is part yeah. of you that's like, Oh, my little buddies at some point, yeah. they're not going <laughs> to, they're not going to be, you know, sleeping in the room right next to yeah. me. Um, what's your, what's your least favorite thing about being a dad? Um, oh man. Well, I always thought it would be changing diapers growing up. Right. Just like my whole life, I've never done well with even just like picking up dog poop. I used to gag. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but honestly, like it's so weird how it just doesn't even phase yeah, me. Yeah, no big deal. It's still gross. Like, I, I don't want it to touch me or anything, but like, it is no big deal. Um, but it's not my least favorite. Like, it's not the greatest. You know, honestly, it at this moment, since he's, like, becoming, he's, like, 18 months old now, he's starting to, like, he's not just a little baby. So mm. he's, like, trying, he's starting to try to communicate. He's starting to throw tantrums. Mm. Um, and it's not even that tantrums are, like, the worst part. It's just, like, trying to figure out how to navigate that. And, like, navigate when he's bad. Like, what do you do? Like, yeah, I don't want to be a bad parent. Like, I think that's my least favorite part is like the stress of like parenting. 
because we haven't had to like do a whole lot of parenting yet. It's just keeping this little thing alive. Right. Yeah. And so like, I'm like, I stress about that so much. I'm like, I don't want to mess this kid up. I yeah. definitely have some traumas from my childhood that like I'm trying to avoid at all costs. Mm. Um, so yeah, that, and then honestly, uh, like the lack of like, just like freedom, not even freedom. That's, that's not the right word. Like, just being able to be like, hey, I feel like going to get a beer. Uh, spontaneity. Yeah, spont- Yeah, that that's something that, like, it's not always the worst, but sometimes it is. Like, yeah. on days where, like, I'm feeling really sad, and I'm like, I need to go do something, and I just can't. Because I'm like, well, yeah, I got this kid sleeping probably for the next two hours. <laughs> And then I can't just go to a brewery and have a few beers by myself, <laughs> <laughs> which I mean I didn't do that anyways. I like to go with people, but yeah, yeah. I think that's been something like that's probably been the toughest part for me to get past, I guess. And there's days I don't. There's days it doesn't bother me. Um, but yeah, I mean, like when you have a kid, even when you get married, they say there's like you go through like a grief stage. Of like you grieve the life you used to have. Oh yeah, not not in a way that you would change it. Like I wouldn't change anything to go back. Um, never. Like I would. I like. I love Ozzy. I love being a dad. I love Hannah. I love being married. And I would never change anything about it. But I did go through those stages of like grieving, like my old life. Yeah, hanging bit. out with the homies nonstop all the time. Yeah. Hitting the brewery after brewery. Yeah. Coffee shops great. in the morning, staying up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Meeting becoming regulars cuz you had no money so like people gave you free stuff all yeah. the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a regular anywhere anymore. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I was thinking about just our time. So Richie and I both worked at Little Bear Coffee. Yeah. Uh that was a good season. Um yeah, that was fun. But I kind of just look at that season now it's just kind of a dream just yeah. back then just working at the coffee shop and just all these regulars coming in and you're just hanging out at the bar. Oh, yeah. It seems like you're just hanging out with your homies and you're just yeah. making coffee. You get to control the music. Yeah. That was a good time. I it was fun, like yeah. that one. Like It was like a year season. I would say at the, uh, uh, uptown yeah, little yeah. bear. That was, that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. And then I think I was there like almost two years. Maybe it was longer than that, but yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was kind of a blur, I guess, <laughs> at this point. I was fun, yeah. I, I was single when I first started working there. Like, Hannah and I had it. We, okay, we yeah. started hanging out because she started coming into Little Bear all the time. Yeah. So. But yeah. some of those relationships awesome. with those regulars. Oh, yeah. I like, that's a, special, that's a special bond right there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was just thinking... <laughs> Like Emily and I went to maybe we went to like Castle Coffee, uh, like a month or two ago. Oh my god! <laughs> and anyway, it was just such an ordeal, and it was just yeah. the coming to the realization that it's just not the same anymore. No. Just going to, I don't know, getting the kids dressed, getting them buckled into their car seats, driving all the way over there, having yeah. to deal with the fits, getting them out of the car. Going and standing in line and then ordering coffee and then you're just like, you don't know anybody there anymore because all, I don't know, turnover rate at coffee shops is, yeah. <laughs> is a real yeah, thing. Yeah. So you go there expecting to see all your friends and like, I don't oh, know, yeah. have this like social little outing and then it's just... Uh, why did we do this? We could have just made a Chemex at home. Let's yeah. just let's just go home. The kids would just be fine running around. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, we used to go to Humble daily. Or yeah. Or <laughs> Humble Coffee. Well, Shout out to James Humble. worked there and Levi worked there. Did Kaylin work there? She, she did. Worked there. Yeah. Not not when we were all like going that yeah. heavy though. Like yeah. Did, we were there. That was the morning was Humble. The <laughs> evening was Tractor. Tractor. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, okay. I want to kind of talk about cooking. Oh, yeah. Food. Let's do it. And all that shit. Stop talking about kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, there's there's more kid questions there, oh, okay. but um, <laughs> that's our entire lives. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Like, I, sometimes I get sick of it, and I feel You're like just everyone, such a dad. Yeah, or I feel like other people are getting sick of me talking about it. I'm like, it's hard. Like, it's 
my whole life. But yeah, cooking, I yeah. I also, that's part of my life. Yeah. So. Um, okay, so Richie's a great cook for people listening. Yeah, I've experienced yeah. many of his yeah. his meals. He's he's blessed me with a lot of his cooking. Um, I like cooking too. I actually, yeah. I love cooking. Um, but also as a parent and... I, I, I'm just kind of busy and like working full time and trying oh, to focus sure. on other things. And so I don't actually get to get super creative and make yeah. these elaborate meals. Um, so I kind of just have like simple go to quick meals. And I'm just kind of wondering what your average meal is. Like, obviously you can whip up a sick old dish, but like, what is like a simple average kind of quick go to yeah. meal that you will cook or make on a daily or semi-frequent basis yeah well i mean so like lately i've been like it's been i've been having like be very creative because you know we're just normal people or a one income household for the moment i'm actually getting a job soon which Mm. will be really helpful but um uh we're we're doing the whole like we go buy like a the sleeve of like uh chicken from Costco. Oh, or like the three like, pack. Yeah. Well, we do like the, yeah, like the six of okay. like the chicken breasts or the chicken thighs or the chicken legs, or we get like a pack of like a ton of pork chops. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause it's just cheaper. So I'm having to like really be creative. Like, okay, so we have chicken for the next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I don't want the same thing every time. Um, and then like, you know, we'll go buy a bag of potatoes. So like, it's kind of fun, like having to be creative that way. Mm hmm. Um, but I guess a go to definitely was just like, I really, I've been enjoying just like, um, you just do like a pan fried butter based chicken breast. Really nice. Um, it's what, that's how I like to cook my steaks too. But like, you know, you like, you season it, you sear it on both sides, you throw in a slab of butter, some rosemary, some fresh garlic, and you just butter based the breast, put it into the oven. Let it cook the rest of the way. Mm. Uh, it's just like it's so like it's like decadent, and it makes like you know it kind of like elevates your like just chicken breast. Yeah, because like growing up, like we would just cut it up, cook it up the fastest, mix it with some rice or something. Mm-hmm. That was the way to go. So it's nice, and then um, try to do the round rounded meal. So like we always do like Hannah, I love potatoes. Mm-hmm. Uh, our go to is just like roasted. Potatoes, which is like olive oil, salt, pepper, red pepper flakes, garlic. Yeah. Um, get them like real like crispy. But I've also been like trying to mess around with potatoes, like doing like fondant potatoes and like. What is that? That's like you get like a, a potato. Typically people like make it nice. They make it look like a cylinder or like a square, like a cube or something. And then you like. Uh, Get in a, a cast iron, get it real hot with some oil, s- like um, really sear both sides, and then you dab out the oil, and then you do the butter basting with like the butter and the, the you know, you do rosemary, thyme, whatever, garlic, and then you put it in the oven with just like a little bit of like uh, chicken broth, bone like vegetable broth, any mm-hmm. kind of broth, and then just let it in the oven for a while, and then like so both both ends are like really crispy, and the middle is just like. Just butter. It's like so okay. soft. And it's really nice. It's like I learned about it on like probably like Master Chef or something. Yeah. Like, oh, that looks sick. <laughs> Guilty pleasure. Yeah, for sure. yeah. <laughs> like there was like a few seasons. Like everyone was like fun on potato this 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 and like I was like I'm gonna try that out and it was great and like you know Hannah loves French fries. So does Ozzy. So I'll make homemade French fries all the time. Classic. And learned how to try like they're the, as close as I can get to like McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> and like they've come out great and so like and then. I, we love Brussels sprouts, which is, like, crazy because I, I hated them as a kid. They're awful. Yeah, but same. Brussels sprouts. I love cauliflower. I've been doing, like, some Parmesan crusted, like, cauliflower mm. and Brussels sprouts. So that's my typical meal. It's nothing too crazy. But, you know, so it's, it's kind of what we're, we're dealing with right now. Like, yeah. You know, and, like, I get creative. Like, Hannah loves fried rice. That's probably, like, we've probably had fried rice more times in our house than any other meal because yeah. it's just like Hannah's favorite. And I've been making like to be creative I've been making homemade dumplings or like homemade, uh, like pot stickers, super mm-hmm. easy. You know, you just, the dough's just flour and water. Yeah. 
and then just like meat, you know? So typically like a foundation of meat and then you'll do like a side of some sort of vegetable. Yeah, or meat, like, potato, vegetable. Yeah. And like right a, there, honestly yeah. pasta is like a big thing because we just love pasta and like simple. Simple. I've been um, also to save us some money and just because like it's fun for me. We don't buy bread or pasta really anymore. I make our I make all of our homemade pasta. Oh, you've been making it. Homemade bread. Nice. Yeah. So that's been like it's been like a fun thing. And like so we have we have a lot more like pasta and like bread. And yeah. Yeah. So I like I don't get too fancy. Like every once in a while we're like, all right, let's splurge. Go get like uh I'll make like a risotto with like a, like a mushroom risotto with like some fish or like some chicken mm. or a steak. Uh, lobster risotto every now and then. What's like your go to if you're gonna dine out yeah. in Albuquerque? What's what's your favorite restaurant to go to? Honestly, it's gonna sound like okay. Dine out, like if we're going to like a fancy place lately, like I've only been once, but our, our last like date night we went to Archo Cafe, and it was great. Never been actually. It was awesome. I, uh, you know, like I I'm very picky with like restaurants now which i feel i feel dumb being that way but also like i go somewhere i pay like 30 dollars for mail i'm like dude I've, you're yeah you're allowed I've to make be this better i'm like i i've made this better for 10 dollars yeah. instead of you know i spent 30 dollars for just han and i instead of 60 for two meals that i'm like oh, this sucks like dude i so many I meals that. like that so like honestly we typically go to places where i'm like i for sure can't really do this. Like, yeah. we go get sushi. We like crazy fish is our favorite. Or honestly, we'll get fast food because, like, we eat. We never eat out because it's just to save money and to be healthier mm-hmm. and everything. But we're, like, we feel like eating out. Like, we'll get Dragon Walk is our favorite Chinese food place. Hannah loves McDonald's. So we'll get, like, McDonald's. Mm. And, like, that's, like, honestly, like, once every two weeks we'll, like, get fast food. And, like, yeah. on a date night, yeah, we'll go, like, we'll try something new. Like, Archo Cafe, though, has been my favorite so far like the drinks were great the food was great um yeah i had no complaints about it It was pretty awesome yeah emily and i kind of like anytime we go out to eat now i'm i'm totally that same way i've i've had so many meals where i've spent a decent amount like yeah you're spending 20 to 35 dollars on a dish yeah and you're like what the hell like i've made this way i can yeah. make this i can go to the store right now buy all this ingredients for half the price make it and it's just way better yeah um i've like gotten to the point where i'm like sending stuff back now i'm like oh no <laughs> i'm turning into that person i can't do that <laughs> dude okay so i wish i could <laughs> i've gone to a place i won't name the place but i had literally raw cold steak like i cut it in half and it's cold in the middle and yeah. it's like raw i'm like hey Sorry, can I get another one that's yeah, actually medium <laughs> uh, medium rare? And then I they sent it back, and then I had to send it back again because it was less cooked. I was like, who the hell is in this kitchen? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I've I've come to a place where I'm like, I'm gonna just going to order meals that I can't make yeah. for myself. Like, if I'm going to go out to brunch or breakfast, I know how to make two eggs and a thing oh, of meat yeah. and toast. Like, I'm going to get something Easy. more exotic, like a... yeah. Something I wouldn't, like a frittata or like a something decked out would, omelet or something sure. like that. Um, oh, yeah. Like, we also love, I didn't mention, like, Matucci's. Yeah. Um, in Knob yeah, Hill. Yeah. Uh, we love going there. and But, yeah, I don't just get, like, the, the like, freaking ragu or something, you know, like, just right. the pasta. Like, I'm, make sure I get something that I'm like, oh, I don't do this. Yeah, like, some, like, duck confit or something yeah, <laughs> like yeah. that. And, like, duck breast has been one of our favorites. It's great. Um Yeah. What? I guess also Los Sabanos is pretty awesome. I can, oh, sorry, yeah. I'm, like, I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember all these things. Uh, no, yeah. that's a, that's a that's a Compo's good staple. Great. They they do a great job as well. Yeah, really expensive, obviously. So yeah, but I've farm and table. Like, that's so. another good one. Oh yeah, we, I've only been there once, but we went on like a date night and it was freaking great. One place that I've just been loving <laughs> every time I go there, they knock it out of the park. Is La Finca Bowls. Have you heard of La Finca? Yeah, I used to print their t-shirts. Oh, really? <laughs> so I met them that way. Yeah, they're really cool. They're super cool. They need to expand into a different location because uh, their spot's too small. Because they've hard. they've outgrown yeah. it. Like yeah. they're they've had to shut down their like online ordering. They've had Dang. to they because they're so busy. Yeah, like 
they're awesome. crushing it and I'm stoked for them. Open up a second location. Yeah. Uh, but it, uh, like places like flying star, you go there and it's just always an, a, a B or a C and yeah. their prices are just so expensive. So and it's high. like, okay, I'm yeah. done with flying star. I'm going to go to La Finca, get freshly cooked food and spend 13 or 14 yeah. bucks on a bowl and they're just so consistent. Yeah. They're they're one of my favorite spots right now. Yeah, Los Poblanos is another. Yeah, they do a good job. If we're gonna like go out, I like Grass Burger. Grass Burger is yeah, pretty Grassburger good. Is great. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Is like we usually we typically like we'll spend our money like doing something we can't do with Ozzy. Like we'll go like yeah. bowling. We'll go. Uh, well, we had a date night last week and we went and played pool at Anodyne, which was sick. Oh, nice. That for a while, I had some drinks. And then, so we spent more, like, I mean, last weekend, we also then went to Artichokes. We spent money. But, like, yeah, well, typically, we're, like, let's go eat, like, like we get, like, like uh, Amore pizza in yeah. green jeans. Love the Neapolitan-style pizza. Mm-hmm. And it's also, like, making that Neapolitan crust is really, like, it's not super tough, but it just takes time. But, yeah, like, that's kind of a go-to. Yeah. There's some good places. Like, we just don't, like, and, like, uh, food trucks. We like to follow food trucks. Yeah. Sometimes. Like the one we had at our wedding, the Rio's Tacos. Yeah. Well, we went with you guys. We went to Ex Novo. Right. Yeah. 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 Because they're there every Saturday, or at least they were. I don't know if they still are, but yeah, they have like that ch- cheese crusted quesadilla. Stupid. It's just, I mean, it's just literally like a ton of cheese. They just fry up, throw a homemade tortilla on, and throw some meat in. That's like pretty much all this, but it's so much cheese and so delicious. <laughs> I remember whenever I used to work at Chipotle, um, we would each shift we would get essentially whatever meal we wanted yeah. as like a break meal, and everybody would always make the quesarito. So it's basically oh, just like yeah, a yeah. big old fucking quesadilla wrapped up as a burrito, and it's just. The, I mean, I don't know how I worked after that for eight hours. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> like, Especially like a Chipotle so heavy, size one. dude. Those free meals at Chipotle, though. I mean, I worked there when I was like eighteen, but I just remember that was the best part of working oh, there yeah. was just those free meals. Well, even like when I cooked at Flying Star, that was kind of oh yeah. We like, worked together. I yeah, forgot. We, worked, we worked there together. Too. <laughs> um, that was the best part because I was so poor then too. Like, that was yeah my first like. Not first big job, but first ones in a while. Because I had just been doing part-time stuff or, like, I worked at PBS for a while and stuff. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, like, I don't think we were technically supposed to get a free meal, but... You could kind of... The management there... There's loopholes. Yeah, yeah, the manager there was like, just eat a meal. It's fine. Yeah. Like, you were supposed to just do a discount. But then also, like, we still charge... I think all, like, most of, like, the wait staff got charged, but, like, the cooks didn't for, like, their meal a shift i don't know if that's true but i, oh, I got the feeling <laughs> no that actually probably makes sense because all the waiters and bussers it would just come out of your tips yeah but th- did the kitchen you we all were, didn't get tips right no no that's interesting but we were supposed to pay like yeah so we never did like, dude <laughs> that's a brutal fucking job and you guys aren't getting the tip money yeah hell yeah you're gonna make yeah, your own meal for like, sure <laughs> and like that was great because like during that time that was the only meal i would eat Every day, because I worked every day, but like one day, dude. So, I remember the staff, um, uh, like the kitchen staff. Wow, those are some hard motherfuckers. Yeah, dude. they're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm on day fourteen straight, just oh, like yeah. going in the back smoking a cigarette. Some of those people, I'm just like, dude. Oh yeah, you're you're tough. It was tough. Man. That's, it was, a, that's a tough I never job. smoked more cigarettes in my life than working <laughs> there. Because yeah, I would get in like, at ride leave class. Get in at like two, work till eleven, and yeah. just you know, cook nonstop pretty much the whole time. If you're not cooking, like they were, then it was like that. Flying star, we were uh, Rio Grande. Yeah, I was right. busy. We were like slammed. Yeah, and it also seemed like of all the flying stars to work at, that was probably the one you did want to work at, just because yeah. I feel like. Standards were a little bit higher there. I don't was, know, maybe. I feel like, I mean, I don't know. I guess I've never worked at any other Flying Star. But <laughs> I've eaten at other Flying yeah. Stars, though. And that was, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's like one of the nicer ones, besides like the Paseo and Wyoming one. Yeah, that's a good one, too. I do think working there kind of ruined eating there for me, like yeah. since then. Because also, I don't know. I guess I, really, I, just, <laughs> I don't want to like, but yeah, it just like, not, not that they do anything gross. It's right. more like the money, like you were saying. I'm like, 
I don't want to spend my money on this. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I I appreciate Flying Star. Yeah. I think they're they have a menu that's accessible to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, it's you know you, you you can always get a decent meal there. I just think they're too expensive right now. Yeah, I mean, like they're crazy. taking themselves too seriously. <laughs> yeah, when we worked there, like the one we were at, like we had the same people every day that would come in and get the same meal yeah. every day. Like they, like I remember like some of them like didn't, they were like, yeah, I don't even have pots and pans. Like I don't cook. I just <laughs> eat this every day. So I was like, that's crazy. And like, but you know, it filled a hole for a lot of these people. Like, like, Oh, I just work. I, I need to just pick up this freaking Asian crunch salad every single day. Yeah. Yeah. With extra wontons. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't miss working there. No, me neither. <laughs> I would uh, open up the cake case every single day, get there at five thirty, make like brew coffee, set up the cake case, and then just like eat all the leftovers from yesterday. <laughs> I kind of, <laughs> I honestly gained some weight from working at Flying Star. Dang, and yeah. Anyway, I probably yeah. won't go into too much detail, <laughs> but uh, I made some good uh, like connections and relationships at, at that store. Yeah, it wasn't the worst job, and it was like an experience, you know. Like, yeah, I never like cooked on a line before, uh, so that's cool. Like, found out I can do it. Found out, yeah, I don't love it, but I can do it, you know. And yeah, it was cool. It was whatever. But yeah, it's not one of my go tos <laughs> to eat out at. Yeah, there's better um, places. Now. I love, I love, personally, it's funny, because, like, I love making, trying to make, like, really fancy meals, really nice meals, like, for Hannah, trying new things, mm-hmm. but my favorite, my favorite food is sandwiches. I just love, not necessarily, like, cold cuts, but, like, yeah, everything I make, I'm like, I can make a really good sandwich out of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think go-tos for me lately have just been, I've just been on a big sweet potato kick, so, oh, yeah. like, those purple sweet potatoes i love or no actually i guess they're i don't remember are they japanese or are japanese white in the middle with a purple i don't know uh, they're the purple sweet potatoes the purple ones, yeah. but i just went on a big old kick of those and then we'll just are they different than like the normal orange ones yeah um okay. there's garnets there's jewels there's japanese and then there's purple and then there's whites but yeah. for some reason I get like over, I don't know. Like, there's something about the consistency. There's something about the texture. There's something <laughs> about the taste. I don't know what it is, but I never get old like over That's them. Cool, yeah. Uh, but I'll just yeah dice them all up, throw them in a skillet, butter, oil, and then yeah. I mean, as far as cooking on a budget lately, we'll just get oh yeah. We'll just do like a pack of ground beef or yeah. a thing of chicken. Root veggies are like. So cheap. Potatoes, carrots, olives. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, we always have that. And then Ozzy loves them too, which helps. Like yeah. the kids usually love, especially sweet potatoes. I think you got me into sweet potatoes. I, we came over for dinner one day, and you cooked a bunch, and they were just like, you just cut oh, circles. Oh, yeah. And you just like put. Garlic butter. And yeah, all kinds of crap on them, and then just roasted them. I was like, that was, I, like, I cook them for Ozzy like that now. That's his favorite way to have sweet potatoes. Dude, that shit's so good. And then just honestly, frozen veggies. Just that's another super cheap way. Cause yeah, we're also on a single income budget yeah. right now. So we just it's gotta tough. lots of yeah, quinoa, yeah. rice. Yeah, lots of um, <laughs> <laughs> But oh, and then we're entering spring. So our yeah, backyard's about to be popping off. We got Back the end. eggs that are producing about four eggs a day. Oh, that's um, awesome. So that helps. I think I've found out since having chickens for the last two years, it's not cost efficient. Really? Like I, I you know, <laughs> you buy chickens because you're like, oh, we're gonna save so much money on eggs. We just eat, and we do. We eat so many eggs. Yeah. But it is not cost efficient because really? you have to. I mean, if you're going in with no equipment or anything, like you have to build or buy a coop. Yeah. You have to have, make sure that they have protection. So you have to have like a cage or something because they can't just live in the tiny coop. Yeah. They have to have a run that has protection. Okay. And then you have to buy them feed and like um, 
uh, I guess it's like starter feed. You have to get all the equipment to brood them and to like, they need a heater at first. They need, uh, uh, just like, there's so many hidden costs yeah. where you're just like, this is not, some eggs. <laughs> yeah, just go buy cheap eggs. It's fine. Um, it's nice that we probably eat like half of our eggs from our chickens but don't buy chickens thinking you're gonna save money because that yeah. it's the feed like that's the ongoing yeah. cost is that we buy them organic feed and it's probably 30 bucks for a 40 pound bag okay. and we'll go through a bag a month or something so we're it's like a 30 dollar yeah. a month just to keep them alive and then We'll supplement them with bugs that we find in the yeah. yard and then food scraps and stuff. But you want that kind of foundational base yeah. covered of all their, I don't know, whatever. Um, it's fun. I love having yeah, chickens. Yeah, cool. I think it's a fun experience and it's fun for Aesop. He gets to go outside and feed them and yeah. go collect eggs. Um, so that kind of helps offset a little bit of the cost. But yeah, just super cheap. These days, um, Aesop loves avocados. He loves blueberries. Yeah. So we keep it very simple. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's what's your least favorite? What's your least favorite vegetable to cook up? I guess any more, just because it, it might be because like we had it so much. Uh, is like zucchini <laughs> and squash. Okay. We got like on this huge kick. Don't want to deal with it. Um, but I mean, uh, that's just as far as like, I just got bored of it and couldn't, can only get so many creative, I feel like with it and everything. Yeah. Um, but also, man, I don't know. It's hard <laughs> for me. I think it's beets. I don't like beets oh, at all. Oh, okay. I we never get beets. I <laughs> me neither. Yes. Yeah, so maybe that's my least favorite. <laughs> I don't hate them. I mean, I've had beets and like, they're fine. Um, yeah, they're not great though. It's just such a strong taste. It's yeah. like pungent, and I think it's just overwhelming. I don't love like cucumbers. Yeah, and I think that's more like I just find them like just so boring. I guess, and like I love pickles. Like if you pickle a cucumber, you don't really I'm cook up in. cucumbers. Do you don't you? really cook them up. <laughs> yeah. You just throw them raw in a salad. Yeah, I don't know. Like <laughs> I'd rather. I guess I'm thinking more of like what I have fun cooking, I guess. Yeah. Uh cucumbers are definitely not up there. Uh beets, I guess I never cook beets. Also like corn. I love corn, but like Yeah, that's a good one. We don't like the most creative we get with it is like either like elote or uh cablacitas. Yeah. Uh, otherwise I'm just like, here's just some corn I warmed up yeah, with some butter. <laughs> corn is boring. Um I'm I'm not a big tomato person either. I love tomato. I like tomatoes that I grow in my backyard. Like, I'll yeah. eat those. But I guess a nice heirloom tomato is good. But, I don't know, aromas and beef. This is, like, not very interesting to me. I get that. Um, I mostly just make sauce with them. Yeah. I either make a sauce. Actually, that's all I do. I make sauce or I just, like, eat them raw with some salt. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do with avocados. I'll just, like, throw a bunch of salt on it. Yeah. It's great. Um, okay, if you could eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Dang. Does that have to be like the same exact thing? One ingredient. One, ingredient. one food. Dang, I'm trying to think. I'm trying not to think like logically. <laughs> like what will sustain, yeah, sustain you me? Yeah, you have to think about sustainability. You have to think about I'm also like, what do I like? Like... I mean, I'd have to go with just like, like fish. That's if good. That one. counts. Yeah. Like, just because, like, I think for me, I would have to have meat. Like, I love meat, but also chicken. I think I'd get sick of really like a lot quicker. Red meat, I love. And I want to choose that, but I know it's not good for you to have a ton of red meat. Like, even Han and I have like cut red meat. We didn't cut it out, but like, it's like a special occasion. It's really yeah. Good. Uh, but fish. I mean. I don't know. Like fish is good for you. It's tasty. You can cook it so many different ways. I, I can't choose just one fish because I don't even know that much about fish. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't choose trout. I would choose like tuna or 
or something, but <laughs> yeah, I would actually maybe second that. Yeah, I think, and I love fish. Um, I don't know. I remember like I was listening to this uh, like podcast the other day where they were talking about like, like I think the reason that like the world is like not even coming to an end, but like you know how like California is supposed to like fall into the ocean, right? He was like, sure. I think God meant for us to live by the sea. He's like, we should we weren't supposed to go inland. We're supposed to live, mm-hmm. like, we, we have everything we need by the sea. We can get the fish. We can get the vegetables. We, like, are by water. And, like, yeah. so, I don't know. Maybe our bodies would just do better that way. Dude, think about the logistics of living in the desert yeah. without technology. Yeah. And without internet and without yeah. having to pipe our water all the way from the Colorado River. Yeah, like exactly. We probably shouldn't be living in New Mexico. <laughs> no. And, like, even, like, having, like, food, like... Growing food, we have to get it's our water. It's so somewhere. tough to grow food here. Yeah, you have to have you have to rely on city water. Yeah, like there's no weather. I mean, I guess the acequia you can get water rights, but even that is kind of hard to do too. Yeah, it's tough, and you have to pay for that privilege, and you have to be on a property that has access to it, and even that it's pretty limited to availability, yeah. and you have to there's contracts for people downriver, so. Not oh yeah, I don't want to be in New Mexico if there's not yeah access to no, water. That's no, not yeah. gonna happen. You can't. But yeah, I mean, and so yeah, I guess I think fish would be like logistically, and also I love fish. Like I love I love sushi. I love just like a piece of fish cooked up. I love fish sticks. Yeah, you know, I even yeah. canned tuna. I love I, dude. I'll go hard yeah, on some I'll tuna. Mess with some tuna. <laughs> I've been getting like um from Trader Joe's like the uh, seaweed snacks. You know, yeah. they're like a yeah, dollar yeah. for the pack. You just, like, you get your tuna, you just mix in, like, some soy sauce, some sriracha, some ginger, and then just scoop that into, like, a piece of seaweed and eat it. And, like, I'll just do that for, like, a meal. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> I think if, I think that's a good, I think that's a good answer. Thank I you. think that would sustain me for the longest amount of time. I guess my secondary answer would be, I, I guess it would be eggs. I think I could probably sustain myself for a decent while. I eat eggs almost every day. I had, yeah, yeah, me too. (laughs) I love it. I mean, I I only have chickens. I I guess I have a baby who loves eggs. So like, I guess, but like even Hannah's never, you didn't used to be an eggs. Like I've been making her omelet, like a cheese omelet. She has like one a weekend. She, I even taught her to make it herself because she wants to. She just wants to always have it, I guess. (laughs) Do you ever watch Alone, or uh, do you ever watch these shows where it's like survival and they have to be living off the land, and there sometimes um, it's competition, something like that? Do you ever watch that stuff? I mean, Hannah, I love Survivor. <coughs> That's probably about as far as survival. I've never watched like uh, anything else. Like I don't even know what else it was like. I mean, I guess when I was a kid, I used to watch like the Bear Grylls stuff. Yeah, like my dad and I would watch that, or there was like Survivor Man. Yeah, I remember. I liked that. One. that. Um, and with another funny thing, like the easiest time he had surviving was like he was stranded on like uh, an island. Like if you were like a pirate, like all you know, whatever, marooned on an island, that was his easiest time. Like I remember watching, it, I was like, this looks like a vacation. Like he went <laughs> yeah. and fished and like cooked his fish. He wrapped them in like banana leaves or some shit and cooked them underground, and it looked amazing. He got like coconut. Yeah, he like got. Caught, built a little trap and caught crabs, and he was just chilling on the beach eating all this seafood. I was like, "Oh, maybe that even yeah, proves we're nice. supposed to we're supposed to live by the ocean even more." Yeah, totally. And like I, one thing I am kind of learning from watching there's a series called Alone where it's yeah. this competition where ten people try to out survive each other in the most oh. drastic conditions. Um, but there was one season where it's like, if you can make it 100 days, then you win half Dang. a million dollars or whatever. And you're just seeing the extent to human capability on so little. Yeah. Um, I think I'm so ingrained and maybe this is like an American thing of just like, we have to eat three meals a day and we have to be constantly (laughs) consuming in order to just like make it throughout the day or make it throughout our work shift or whatever it is. You get hangry. (laughs) Yeah. And I mean, a lot of that is true just because of how, like what we're used to, but it's just interesting watching these people exerting way more energy and they're building shelters and they're literally hunting and they're having to 
think critically and try to figure out how to eat food. Yeah. And they're, they'll like one fish will sustain them for a week. Oh yeah. And some people haven't eaten in three weeks and they're still out there hunting and building their shelter. And it's like, damn, I didn't know people were capable of this. Like I thought we had to be, we've never had to deal with it, (laughs) but it's the people that have good access to fishing or catch like a big moose or a big game. Yeah. Those are the people that make it the furthest. And it kind of just goes to show you that you are able to sustain yourself just off of meat or fish or eggs or something to that extent. Um, Vegetables. I think I could do it for a season, but I don't think it would sustain me long term. I think I need to get that fat and protein. Yeah. And like, just even like out of preference, like, yeah. I just like, I know you don't need me, but like, yeah, I love me so much. <laughs> I need me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know there's people that are vegans and they do it and they're thriving and yeah. I'm happy and for great. them. <laughs> but there's also carnivores that only eat meat and yeah. they seem to be doing well too. So I don't know. I, I don't, <clears throat> I used to have kind of stronger opinions on how, I mean, yeah, I've, kind of grown a lot in this area but i used to think that there was this like perfect one size fits all diet for everybody and like the optimal way of eating but i i'm just learning that it really is uh different for for everybody oh for sure it's very specific for me and i know there's a lot of people that it varies greatly so i don't like care what other people are eating as much anymore um (laughs) but also going back to your like one food question oh yeah if I like wasn't being logical and it was like a meal and I could change it up, which this is maybe cheating, but I would choose pizza. Okay. Why? I just love pizza. It's tasty. I like, yeah. I mean, if I'm able to change it up, I'm like, Oh, I can have like a cheese pizza. Or yeah. A, cheese pizza, a lot of variability with pizza. But even if it's like one pizza, like pepperoni with basil, fresh basil, <sighs> that's my go-to pizza. I could eat that. Like if it was like not thinking like, okay, if I want to die, like, in the next few years let's go out with a bang yeah I'll, i'm gonna choose pizza <laughs> yeah i gotta be honest i was like <clears throat> real nervous to come do this <laughs> i don't know it, was, it sounds silly i know it's, it's not like i don't know i was just like i've never really just talked yeah <laughs> in, like i mean that's not true either like you and i have had just had conversations but I guess there's like this it's aspect different. of like, I'm like, I want to be entertaining. <laughs> it's tough with podcasts because everything you say is a statement yeah. because you're putting it out there and you have to, I mean, I get super kind of self-conscious of like, I don't actually have strong stances or it yeah. seems like everything I'm saying on here is just like in stone and Oh, for sure. On the record, because people can go back and so I'm like, damn, I don't want to say yeah. the wrong things. <laughs> but also, then I just I can't think about it. But I, I've I've been nervous, and I still actually kind of get nervous. But then once I realize that I can edit it and manipulate it, yeah, that's true. It's too. like <laughs> okay, I don't have to feel weird about awkward pauses or anything. Yeah. Um, I have <clears throat> a couple of segments that I I do at the end of my podcast, if you would yeah, entertain me. Um, so the first one is lows and highs, and it's just me oh. asking you what was the lowest part of your week and what was the highest part of your week. Um, I still need to figure out how to phrase this to make it seamless, but I need to answer it first, and then I'll throw it to you. Okay, cool. Shit, okay. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to have to work on that. But anyway, the lowest part of my week was my situation with my truck. Yeah. So somewhere. I put or I my truck was acting up. So I realized that the thermostat in my truck has been out for the last month and I kind of knew it, but then I was smelling coolant and I was kind of yeah. just driving on it regardless and the heater yeah. stopped working, but it's starting to warm up and we got our tax return, so I was like, all right, let's take a truck yeah. into the shop. Um, dropped it off last Monday, and then it's I thought it was gonna be a two or three day thing. Friday came along. I wanted to get it before the weekend, wasn't ready, 
I'm still waiting on the damn call. I called them this morning and they have not gotten back to me. It better be done by today. Yeah. I'm, I swear. <laughs> it's just frustrating. Well, and it's, it's, hard. it's, it's debilitated Emily. Yeah. It's, she, I mean, I have to take my, the other car to work. So she's trapped here. You got work. And it kids. just sucks. Yeah. Not have it. And <laughs> makes you realize how dependent you are on your vehicle. Uh, yeah. So dealing with that and continually dealing with that has been frustrating. Uh, the best part of my week was uh, my little brother Joshua is in town. Oh, cool. And two days ago, okay, this is kind of cool. So two days ago, we went up to Santa Fe because there is a couch posted on Facebook Market. And so we hit them up, and it was in Santa Fe, but it was kind of like, all right, it's a commitment, but let's go take a look at it. And so Joshua and I drove up there, and then once we got there, we realized that the lady was not holding it for us. Like, she was just sending out the address to everybody. And we showed up, and we oh, pulled geez. up, and it was a garage sale. And so anybody could have bought it, and we yeah. could have just driven out there for nothing. Uh, but it was so cool. It was this really old couple. They were in their 90s, and I guess they're moving across the country, didn't want to sell the couch. Uh, but it's so cool, it's so comfortable, and it was three hundred and fifty dollars. And then, literally three minutes after Joshua and I showed up, a different, like this couple showed yeah. up to buy the couch. And Joshua and I took our time getting there. Josh stopped off at Twisters. I got <laughs> stopped off at the gas station. And it was just crazy how we were three minutes away from not getting this couch. Um, and it's just been so awesome. And so we brought it back. We posted our old couch. Because we sold it because it was just so uncomfortable, our yeah, old yeah. one. Um, and then we sold it the next day for $350. So we completely broke even. Oh, yeah. We upgraded our couch to a way nicer, way more comfortable couch. It barely happened. And I was just super stoked. So that was <laughs> the highest part of my week. That was awesome. And yeah. I'll, I'll throw it to you. Oh, man. So just, just my last week? Yes. Um. Let's see. So... Uh, this last week, the lowest was probably, I guess lately, I've been kind of like getting down on myself about things and just about myself. I've just been like not having like great self-confidence lately, mm. um, which has been rough. It's been like the last few months. It's kind of hindered me to doing things I want to do with my life. Um, but also like I've been working on that with therapy and everything's getting better. But I guess like the lowest part was like, I definitely had like, a day where I just was like, just felt just like the worst. I just felt like a piece of crap. And yeah, uh, yeah, it was just rough. I just like, I had my a hard time just like getting up and like doing things, like getting up and playing with Ozzy and like getting up and like cleaning or doing something. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was probably the lowest, my low of the week. It was just like, I just had like one bad, like a bad day, which yeah. sounds kind of like, now I look back, sounds kind of like maybe <laughs> lame. I don't know. No, no, no. I mean, I a hundred percent understand. Yeah, and it's like it's it's not a normal thing for me. I've I've like most of my life been like very always positive, and so like having these days is like kind of a big deal for me, I guess personally. Yeah, um, and there's like some family stuff that kind of went down that didn't help with that. So it was just I just had like a really rough day, I guess, one day this week. <laughs> yeah. Um. High, I would have to say, uh, well, I guess yesterday, Hannah and I, like, we took, uh, we took Ozzy to the zoo, Ooh. which was fun. Like, I mean, it, it sounds kind of goofy, but, like, with the baby, as you know, it's, like, it's kind of fun. Like, they get super into it, especially with, yeah. like, we haven't been since before winter with him. Mm. And, like, last time we went was actually, we went with just Emmy and... Aesop and Emmy was still pregnant. But oh, she had like dang. she had the you guys already had bought the double stroller. Okay. So we put Ozzy in the double oh, stroller with nice. Aesop. It was it was really cute and Ozzy was like hitting Aesop in the back of the head with things. <laughs> and, but like he didn't give a crap back then. Like he just was like he's just a baby. He's like, he's I, like I don't even I'm know if he could in see the stroller. Yeah, I don't even know if he could see the animals then. Yeah. But like this time he was like running around and he was like pointing at things and like excited. And, like, climbing on crap. And he, I mean, I think he enjoyed playing and, like, he loves just playing dirt. Like, I think he enjoyed playing just, like, 
in new dirt, I guess, yeah. <laughs> than, like, our backyard or, like, the park. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. Like, it's it's those little moments of, like, this, like, crazy, like, awesome family time where, like, yeah, you know, life gets so, excuse me, life gets so busy that, like, we just, like, had this, like, kind of chill day at the at the zoo where, like, we brought, like, snacks and we looked at elephants for yeah way more than I would ever look at elephants. <laughs> the um, simple stuff. Yeah, yeah, and it was, like, nice and warm and, like, I was able to wear shorts and a t-shirt. Like, Oof. even that alone made me Game so, changer. Yeah, that, that, that alone could have been, like, my highest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wore a short sleeve <laughs> shirt outside. And it was yeah. Great. But yeah, just going on the zoo with the family, man. It was awesome. Like, yeah. It was a good time. And uh, earlier in the day, we like went and visited Hannah's sister, Emily, and took them some pancakes that I made. You know, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We just this morning got our renewal for nice. our yearly biopark membership. Yeah. It's which great. is vital. If you have kids out there, you yeah. got to get it. It's, yeah. If you're in Albuquerque. The aquarium, all the stuff. Is yeah. Great. That's a that's a staple. That's like a weekly staple for us. Like one of those three. Yeah. Aquarium, like Biopark. Albuquerque is just so yeah. <laughs> not a whole lot to do, unfortunately. Yeah, we're trying. Yeah. We're trying here in Albuquerque. Yeah. We're Yeah, we're trying. Uh okay, last segment. Yeah. Uh what is one practice that you perform on a daily basis that you believe has caused you to level up your your mental health your physical health like what is one thing that you perform that you think other people could benefit by implementing in their lives yeah so something i've started like it's it's, it's basically daily i try to do it daily let's go with that yeah like, daily yeah. or semi regularly there's there's kind of a couple things that i've been like doing with my life like um, I started, I, it's honestly been a few years. I started Wim Hof, the, the breathing, mm. um, it's become more difficult with Ozzy, obviously. Like you can't just sit there and like meditate with this kid, <laughs> right? Just, yeah. Like running up to you and be like, I'm hungry and stuff. But, uh, getting up early is like something I, I'm trying to do so I can do it. But like, yeah, the Wim Hof, um, so explain that for me. Yeah. yeah. Cause I know what it is, but I don't know exactly what it is yeah so it's it's kind of like for me it's definitely really meditative which i mean i think for everyone it's real meditative but it also has like its health benefits but basically you just like you take deep breaths and like kind of like in a kind of a little quicker you know and um it's just really pushing oxygen into your body it's like it's getting like your your body filled with oxygen getting the oxygen pushed into your lung or your uh into your blood mm -hmm. and like it's kind of crazy like it kind of makes you start feeling you get a little lightheaded you start kind of feeling some kind of way yeah um i tend to get like a little bit like it kind of I've, I've talked to someone who said like it gets them warm but for me it kind of cools me down for some reason okay i don't know if like i'm just wrong or if i'm uh it's just everyone's different i don't know mm -hmm. but either way i don't mind and then after like however many breaths you can do i do 40 like deep in out in out i do 40 and then i hold my breath for pretty much as long as you can and like while you're holding your breath I, I i practice meditation like meditative like um kind of things like stuff i heard on like headspace like i mm. i start like i just think about my body i start at the top of my head and i work mm. my way down and usually like with like with headspace they'll tell you to like uh focus on your breath. Obviously you're holding your breath. So you don't do that. I focus on just like feeling the blood flow through my body. Cause you can like, you feel it when you like do that breathing and then you hold your breath. You just like, you just like can feel like you're like blood pulsing through like yeah. your arms and your legs and stuff. So mm -hmm. I kind of go through that. And then sometimes my mind wanders and I bring it back and you know, like the longest I hold my breath, like usually the first, I do like three rounds. The first round, like it's like 45 seconds Second round, I get, like, above a minute. Set Third round, I get to almost two minutes. And, like, it's it's really nice. Like, it really kind of centers me, levels me out. It's, like, meditation along with, like, just, like, breathing like that. It's just, like, so good for you. Yeah. Um, I get sun. I go and just, like, make sure I get sun hitting my body every morning. Um, which, you know, some people are like, 
at first I was like, it's so hard with Ozzy. I'm like, well, he needs it too. So let's just go outside. Like, <laughs> I know. Anytime we too. go outside, Emily's inclination is to just, oh, we need hats. We need jackets. Yeah. We need a cup. I'm like, yo, let them get some sunlight. They're inside all you, day. Yeah. <laughs> I, if you're out there for a long time, yeah, you need yeah. to do that. But like, yeah, it's good to get some sun on you. And then, um, yeah, those are, it's pretty much that I've, since I've started therapy, which I've, I've only been going for a month and a half now, I do this thing where, um, it's not called check yourself. I keep calling it that. I can't remember what she calls it, but basically you just like, yeah, you just like, you just, you go through in your mind, you're just like the good things in your life, the things yeah. you're happy about, things you're grateful for. Um, and like, I kind of do that in my mind as well every morning. That really helps me to kind of, or it has been helping me to just be like, yeah, start my day off like more positive and just like thinking about the good things in my life. So I don't start down and have to work my way up, like try to mm. start up and maybe you go down, maybe you stay, stay where you are. Yeah. But yeah, this has been kind of my, my things lately. Nice. Hell yeah. Yeah. Sounds like you've been listening to Andrew Huberman. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> I've been listening Huberman to some, the Huberman lab. I listened to, a couple. I, he was actually on Two Bears, One Cave. Yeah, yeah. Which I listen to every week. And then one of the greats. Yeah, yeah. And then the Huberman Lab came. I was like, oh heck yeah. Yeah, the sun thing for sure. <laughs> yeah. Got that. I'm like, it, it has helped. It's kind of stupid. Like it's something so simple as like just like some sunlight on your body, some vitamin D. Yeah. Uh can change to make such like a difference in your day. Yeah, I since I've been kind of working a little bit earlier in the day, like I get to work at five. Yeah. Um, I have to be really intentional about that. Yeah. Uh, especially cause you want to try to do it. I mean, ideally is what Andrew Huberman says. You yeah. want to try to do it early in the morning and yeah. get like morning sunlight just to kind of set that circadian rhythm for sure. So during my breaks, I'm like outside for 10, 15 minutes, 30 minutes or whatever it is. Um, and then, I'm in bed and like the sun's kind of going down. So I'm just like trying my best to kind of align. Oh yeah. Um, with like align my day with the sun to the best of my ability, even though I'm inside for a large yeah. portion of my day. Um, yeah. Try to do something, maybe 30 minutes to an hour outside every day. Same with the kids. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's crazy how it is such a simple idea, a simple task. Yeah. But it, really does make a big difference and it i guess it makes sense too because everything else in this ecosystem that we live in (laughs) needs sun or is outside or and that's another thing it's just like focusing on water like that's another thing that i'm like water is oh yeah i mean those bumper stickers that say water is life i mean they're that's a real thing oh yeah (laughs) well even like my therapist and i were joking today i was like yeah i was like in a real shitty mood the other day, I was like, then I realized, oh, I didn't eat, I didn't drink water. <laughs> yeah. And like, as soon as I did that, I was like, oh, I feel great. <laughs> I'm actually not in a bad mood today. <laughs> I just need some freaking water. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, Dude, thank you for doing this. Yeah, of course. I hope I was an okay guest. It was fun. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> Yeah, it was it was it was tough. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I know. <laughs> no, no <me> too. <laughs> um, is there anything else you want to throw out there? Is there anything else you want to say? Um, I don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> you know, um, next time we'll get into religion. Uh, we'll get into politics. religion. I wanted. I also wanted. I was tempted to ask you questions about your therapy because I also started therapy like two months ago. Yeah. <laughs> And there's a lot of stuff I have been learning about myself. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> um, I don't mind talking about that stuff. And I think it's no, actually good for me to talk about that stuff. And I'm actually finished now. Um, I had my last appointment last week. Uh, I lost my last covered. I could keep going, but yeah. it's not covered anymore. Oh, gotcha. Um, but I think I'm going to just like kind of pause for a while reassess i got some good tools yeah work on Um, what you started for sure and then if i feel like i need to continue it down the line i that door is open um but yeah i'll have you back and we can talk about how fucked up we are yeah (laughs) that's great all right thank you and um 
thank you all to listening or for listening and watching yeah. and yeah that's about it have a good day everybody goodbye